All sensory stimuli face a common problem, namely how to achieve sensitivity when stimuli are weak, but how to avoid saturation when stimuli are intense. And Miley became interested in how this problem is solved in the olfactory system. We use Drosophila as a model organism. In the fly, like in mammals, all the olfactory receptor neurons, or ORNs, that express the same receptor gene project to the same glomerulus in the brain. There they make synapses with projection neurons, or PNs. Glomeruli are also interconnected by GABAergic interneurons. We can make targeted whole cell recordings from all these neurons in vivo. Flies are cold anesthetized by placing them in a glass vial and submerging the vial in ice water. A custom-sized hole is cut into an aluminum foil recording chamber. This foil restrains the fly during the recording. The fly is secured into position using wax and the antennae are tucked underneath. Fine forceps are used to remove the head cuticle and reveal the brain. Patch clamp recordings are performed at the rig using patch clamp amplifiers and other standard electrophysiology equipment. Projection neurons can be seen on the surface of the antenna lobe. We can target individual neurons for recording using patch clamp electrodes. The membrane of the neuron is drawn to the pipette to form a gigaohm seal. Light suction is then applied to the back of the electrode to obtain a whole cell configuration. In this study, we wanted to know how GABA release from local interneurons affects the response of PNs to their cognate ORNs. In order to study the ORN to PN synapse in isolation, we found an odor that activates only one ORN type, which we call a private odor. We recorded the responses of ORNs and their cognate PNs to various concentrations of this odor, and this allowed us to construct an input-output function for this glomerulus. We found that increasing concentrations of the private odor produced increasing ORN activity, but PN responses didn't grow proportionately. Instead, they saturated. Given this, there are several ways that gain control could operate. For example, gain control could scale either the x-axis or the y-axis of this function. To address this, we needed to drive activity in local interneurons. We therefore blended the private odor together with a public odor. This is an odor that activates multiple ORN types, and we were careful to choose a public odor that does not activate the ORNs that respond to the private odor. Increasing concentrations of the public odor suppressed PN responses to the private odor. This effect was blocked by GABA receptor antagonists. Note that the public odor tended to increase the amount of ORN input required to drive the PN to saturation without really affecting the level at which the PN saturates. In other words, it scales the x-axis of the input-output function. The mechanism of lateral inhibition in this circuit is mainly presynaptic. GABA released from local interneurons binds to receptors on ORN axon terminals, thereby decreasing synaptic vesicle release. We also found that the amount of inhibition in the glomerulus scaled with total ORN activity. This makes sense because many individual interneurons innervate all glomeruli, and so they probably some input from all ORN types. So why might this be useful? When odor stimuli are weak, there's a steep relationship between ORN activity and PN activity, which should maximize sensitivity. As odor intensity increases, the gain of all ORN to PN synapses is normalized, and this makes it harder to drive PNs to saturation while preserving the full dynamic range of each PN. We also modeled the transformation between a population of ORNs and PNs, and we found that normalization can improve odor classification by a linear discriminator. Interestingly, a similar kind of normalization has been described previously in the visual system, and this suggests a fundamental similarity between vision and olfaction. It also suggests that presynaptic inhibition might be a candidate mechanism for normalization in visual circuits. All the work in this study was done by two people, Sean Olson and Vikas Bondawat. Vikas is now an assistant professor at Duke, and Sean is a postdoctoral fellow at UCSD. Flies rock!